Yes. If you say I was a drum major, say I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. Say that I was a drum major for righteousness and all of the other shallow things won't matter. Now, everybody scurrying to the programs from memory say, isn't this the librarian? What is the librarian doing playing drums and reading from Dr. King? Well, the, the truth is, I want you to remember me. I, today, would like you to connect the idea of drums and being a drum major for peace and justice and righteousness and change of community with the Cleveland Public Library. I hope by the end, if I do my job, you may believe that librarians will be leading the parade in the change of communities throughout our cities across the country. Now, but first I have to prove that to you because many of you might think of librarians like Marge here. <laughs> Look at her, working that car catalog, God bless her. <laughs> And you might think of libraries as just these big buildings filled, filled with books. But I know many of you have a very deep and personal feeling about libraries. It, it may be the place you went for story time. It may be that place was your sanctuary where you would go and read books and you dream of faraway places. And it may be the place that you, went, you met your wife in college. But it may, it was that one place that you had a good feeling about. And I know a lot of you have a very good feeling about libraries. But to look at it as that drum major for community change might be a little bit of a stretch for you. So my job is to make the case for that today. So let me start with exhibit A, me. So I was born and raised in Las Vegas um, in a, a very poor neighborhood in, in Las Vegas. The only thing that wasn't burned out in that community was the churches and the public library. So every day, I would go to the library with my friends, and as, as we started to get older, my friends started going and getting into trouble. And I had to make the choice. Was I going to get into the gangs that ultimately destroyed their lives? My two best friends, one died in a drive-by and the other died in prison. Or was I going to take advantage of the library that I had? I started going to the library every day. And ultimately, I was there so much that the librarian said at the age of 13, you're here every day, you should work for us. <laughs> now I know some of you are thinking, what's he talking about? There are no libraries in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, there are libraries. And I started working there. And it was truly a transformational experience for me. And I serve as Exhibit A. Exhibit B was an experience I had two years later at the age of 15. There's a woman who, who lived down the street from me and her children went to the same uh, school there's my younger brothers and sisters and she came in and she saw me she said I need you to help me and so I, I was like okay what do you need and, and so she pulled out this paper from a doctor's office and she said I was at the doctor's and he said I had this and he didn't explain anything to me I don't know what's going on I'm, you know and so I said well you know the librarians are over there I'm 15 years old at this point <laughs> and she said no I, I, I need you to help me so I knew enough to go to get a medical dictionary and I got the book off and I sat at the t table with her and I opened it up and I turned it to the page and I turned it to her and I looked in her eyes and just at that point I realized she couldn't read. So not trying to embarrass her, I turned it back around and I started reading it. I don't even know what I read. I was just sticking it in the back of my head, God, please let her be okay. And as soon as I was done, she just came around and put her arms around me and just started crying. You know, and it, there was nothing wrong with her. But she said, you know, I thought I was going to die and my kids wouldn't have a mother. You know, he just didn't explain anything to me. And at that point in time, I recognized the importance of libraries as being that great equalizer, that that doctor and that illiterate patient was that much closer because there was a public library there. And so at that point in time, I recognized the transformative power of a public library. That's Exhibit B for you. Now, Exhibit C is the Cleveland Public Library. About four and a half years ago, they, were, uh, they called me and asked me if I would like to be the director of their library system. And I was very pleased to have that opportunity because the Cleveland Public Library 
is one of the great libraries in this country. We are the third largest public research library in the country, just behind New York and Boston. And so you are fortunate to have what you do have in this city. And I was so pleased to be able to take the helm of it. It is that way because of its great leadership. John D. White, the, one of the first board presidents said, we want this library to be, have more new ideas, more sane ideas than any other library in the world. And so here's some of those things real quick. Many don't know, but it used to be you had to write on a piece of paper and go to a librarian and then the librarian would go in the back and get the books because we didn't trust you. <laughs> so we said enough of that. We trust our patients, our patrons, and we made sure that you had the opportunity to go whatever books that you wanted. So the Clean Public Library is the first library system to open up books to everyone. We're also one of the first libraries to have an actual branches out in the community. This is our West Side branch that was in Ohio City, uh, opened up in 1892. We welcome children, just like they didn't trust you adults, they certainly didn't trust children. So we were one of the first libraries in the country to allow children to be able to use their public library. And I'm very honored to say that we were one of the libraries that you could go into and no matter what your color, race, you could use the library. And I, I just love going into our archives and I see the African American children and white children in the 30s, 20s, 19, this is from 1940, all sitting there using the library together. And finally, and I'd love to caption this picture. <laughs> this is our director Ernest Gaines and Marion Hutner from this, this, the late 70s. Um, they, weren't they weren't very technology savvy at that point in time, but uh, they recognized that embracing technology was going to be huge for this organization. So we've always taken that risk. We've always recognized that we had to move forward and be progressive. But as Will Rogers said, even if you're on the right track, if you just sit there, you'll get run over. So we can't be run over. The thing is, there's a reality that there is a perception about libraries, as we talked about earlier, the stereotype. And though while many of you are so smart, I recognize that you don't believe in that stereotype, there are many folks who do. And so we have to change the perception of how people see libraries. So who should we look to? How about MTV? Now, some would say that MTV has changed its perception, not really, because they've just moved from three minutes of dysfunctional people to 30 minute and 60 minute versions of dysfunctional people. <laughs> but the, the truth is, if you're in my generation, you think of MTV as music videos and you know that they do a lot more different things now. If you're 25 or younger, all you're thinking about is road rules, uh, catfish, uh, Jersey Shore and I Run Around Naked. Well, that's not really a show, but that's what everybody does <laughs> in the shows. So MTV, uh, music television, is now MTV. In 2010, they made that progression to their new logo because they say they're no longer music television. They have changed the perception for the younger generation of how people see their, their organization. Now you would ask the question, why should we make the shift? You, we love the Cleveland Public Library. Why do we need to make a shift in where, how people see the Cleveland Public Library? Well, I mean, the truth is, there is a perception that sometimes can become reality. And when you look at our groups, the people who we are very associated with, newspapers, book publishers, bookstores, video stores, they're not doing very well right now. They're struggling. And so we start getting the questions of our relevance and can the library survive? We are the people's university and that's what we want everybody to see. And that's what we want you to go out and talk to people about. That the Cleveland Public Library is the people's university dedicated to being the center of learning for the city of Cleveland. And we need you to join us in being able to tell people about that. How are we going to do that? We're putting on our big boy pants, putting on our cape, and we're becoming community deficit fighters. Because before we can really do that and get in the, uh, give everybody in the city of Cleveland to reach their full potential, 
We've got to find a way to make sure that these community deficits that the community faces, hunger, crime, you know, educational issues as far as graduation rate, we're, we're looking at it. We can't just be the facilitator of people coming in and getting books. We've got to be active in changing how people see the Cleveland Public Library. And so an example of that is during the summer, for the past four years, we have participated with the Children's Hunger Alliance and the city of Cleveland in giving, making sure that our children during the summer had that one nutritious meal that they would always get when they went to school. So over this period of time, we've almost given out 100,000 meals during the summer. And thank you. Why is, that, why is that important? Because the children can't learn if they're hungry. You know, they can't read when they're thinking about the fact that they didn't eat this morning. Now, when we do that, then you can go out and start really talking to people about these great programs that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. I want you to be our drum majors for change out in the community talking about these things for us. I want you to talk about I'm Ready to Read, where we want every child to have a library card by the age of five. I want you to talk about Tech Central, where we are going to be that great maker space in this 7,000 square foot space in the downtown Cleveland Public Library, where we are providing and equalizing and providing access to all of these materials, and where next month we will be the first library to hold a mini maker fair in the, in the state of Ohio. I want you to talk to friends about my tunes. I want you to say that virtually you can download three songs per week of, of anybody who's on the, in the Sony catalog. Not enough people know about that, and it's free. Download these, this music. Download music you hate. <laughs> I do that all the time. I actually just downloaded the Harlem Shake. <laughs> and I want you to make sure you talk to people about the great Writers and Readers series, where we brought in over 60 of the greatest authors in the country to the city of Cleveland, and we do it all for free. Whether it was Neil Gaiman we brought in, Ann Patchett, Poet Laureate, K, K. Ryan. You know, these authors are for you. This is an opportunity for you to go out and be our drum major and talk about what we do. Now, it's just not about me being able to put my arm around Valerie Bertinelli, <laughs> although that is very important. <laughs> it's much more about authors like Rebecca Skloot being able to put their arms around our young people and inspire them to be writers themselves. So at this point, I need you to help me. I need you to put your arms out, turn them over, and start beating on your legs. One, two. Ooh, there's some bad rhythm going on. Oh, yeah, everybody's got it. Come on. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. All right, stop. Could you feel the power in that? There's a great renaissance going on in the city. Things are changing, and we know it. We can feel it. All of you are a part of that change. You want the city to be so much more. And it's all about us finding a way to leverage everything that we do and get our beat in unison. We want to beat these community deficits that we are fighting. And we can do that if we all start beating together. So I ask of you to come and get your drumsticks. Come and get your drum. Go to the Cleveland Public Library. I'm going to leave with my drum and my drumsticks. And I hope to see you at the Cleveland Public Library with yours. Thank you very much.